good evening. Welcome to episode six, dealing with challenging clients. It's gonna be a juicy one this evening. Packed, 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 packed full of value. So you're gonna need a pen and paper, whether you're watching on replay or whether you're watching on, um, whether you're watching live. I'd love to hear from you. So don't forget to let me know in the comments whether you're live or whether you're on replay. And if you're a newbie as well, if this is like the first, hey Kerry, if it's the first thing you've ever caught with me, let me know that as well. I'd like to know who's new to my world so I can say hey. Hey Charlotte, good evening. Hope you all had a fab weekend. We just did nothing but cook. Hey Karina, we did nothing but cook all weekend. <laughs> cook and eat, my favorite way to, to spend my time. I've got to stop eating, honestly, or else by the time we've got Christmas out of the way, I'm going to be the size of a house. Um, hey, Kirsty, how you doing? Who else is there? Kirsty's live in the UK. Where, where's everybody else logging in from? Hey, Hayley. Hayley, message me. I totally forgot to message you today. Message me, please. I have somebody that needs your services. Drop me a DM and then I can, um, I'll come back to you in the morning. Should have done that earlier. Hey Susie. Okay, let's let's dive in because people are getting logged in now, so I won't keep you waiting. So dealing with challenging clients. This today is for you if you are someone that is already dealing with clients on a daily basis, weekly basis, monthly basis, has an established business. You're probably gonna get more out of it today if that's you, but also people that I'm just starting out and know that you will be seeing a large volume of people. If you're in a business that serves people and dealing with the general public, you probably know that some of them aren't going to be a joy to work with. Some of them are going to be more challenging than others for whatever reason. And tonight's about what do we do when those things happen? And it's part of the series, five years ago I was a millionaire. Five years ago I was a millionaire. <laughs> and today I'm living in a caravan. That wouldn't be very inspiring, would it? Five years ago I was living in a caravan. Today I'm a millionaire. And I've been retracing my steps and sharing with you all the things that I had to learn. All the challenges that I had to come through. And share that wisdom with you so you don't have to make the same mistakes as me. And client problems has been part of that. And, you know... Talking about it is important because I really wish somebody had helped me prepare for this stuff. Because you can feel, you can feel so emotional when you have people problems. You can feel attacked, you can feel like a failure, you can feel like an imposter. And let's face it, striving for 100% client satisfaction with zero problems ever probably isn't realistic and when we come across the odd unreasonable demanding challenging person and they are the minority let me add I think it's really important as a business we know how to deal with that so we're up to the part of the story where I just had my first million year so just had my first seven figure year and that year and the year that followed that was the year that I learned the most about people. Going to the next level means experiencing next level problems. And that's nothing to be scared of. New level, new devil. It's part of the process and it's something to be celebrated. When we experience challenges, it means we're growing. It means we're levelling up. And if you think about this, if, for example, the reason I look back and I think this, this, this lesson for me in terms of people challenges was so intense is because there was lots of challenges, not just people, people challenges. The reason is because if you need to overcome, let's say, 10,000 challenges to reach seven-figure success, because let's face it, businesses is just a series of challenges that you overcome to create a new normal to get to the next level, a series of, series of problems that you solve, right? And if you have 10,000 problems to earn a million and somebody earns a million across five years or 10 years, 
then they learn those 10,000 problems or they, they, they understand those 10,000 problems and get through them or they go through those 10,000 challenges across a 10 year period. If you do it in a year, it feels like a baptism of fire because you go through the same challenges, you just go through them in an intense, small amount of period, smaller amount of time. So it feels much more intense than if you were going through it across 10 years, doing it in 10 months. Hi, Jesse. Good evening. So that's probably why it, what I'm going to share with you and all the problems I faced when it comes to challenging people happened in a really short space of time. So it felt, you know, if, if the average person that builds a, a, a million a year plus business, it takes five years, 10 years, the average person goes through these challenges in five, 10 years. But because I did it, bam, so quick in that 12 month period, everything felt really intense. And that's where we're up to now in the story. I'd, I'd mastered money making it and keeping it. <laughs> I'd marked, mastered the process and the strategy behind branding to stand out to your ideal client. Hey Sarah, my love, nice to see you. I'd mastered the process of lead generation and getting a steady flow of inquiries and I'd have mastered the process of sales, turning those inquiries into sales. They're the only three things that matter in a business. That's why they're the only three things that we teach and support people in in WAM. My clients were having amazing results. I'm looking at my journal now as I'm speaking to you because I've, I've highlighted things. I was winning in that area, like loving seeing them grow and transform into the, the people I knew they could become. And that was amazing. I had multiple six figures in the bank saved. I was like, oh my God, I could buy a house outright cash. I, I was just, I felt like I was winning. Hey, Arena, talking of powerhouses, watching them transform. <laughs> um, I guess my attitude was a bit like, well, what could I possibly have to learn now? Arrogant, cocky, stupid, I know. But I was, I started to feel a bit like, wow, I've mastered it, I've nailed it, winning. But here's the thing, if you have a large business, then it must serve a large amount of people. Therefore, you're going to experience difficult people. And this was my next challenge that I'd not mastered yet because I'd not come across it yet. Everybody had been a joy up until this point. So it blindsided me a little bit when I started to have people problems, client problems, challenging clients. I was like, oh my God, this is no. And I didn't like it very much. But the reality is, if you're building a big business, you're gonna serve a large amount of people and you're gonna encounter challenging, difficult people too. Not everybody's gonna be a joy. It's nothing to fear. Let me start by saying that. I don't want you to fear it. I just want you to expect it and know that you can get through it if you know what to do when it happens because that's going to make it easier for you. It's not a reason to stay small. It's not a reason to shrink back and think, well, I won't build a big business and have big amounts of people to deal with then and then I'll have less problems because you just have other problems. But they just might not be the same problems. It's absolutely no reason to shrink back. The majority of people are going to be a joy. The majority of people are going to be a pleasure. These people are only going to be a really small percentage. But isn't it so easy to focus on the negatives because we're human and we feel, we do take it personal, especially when it's our life's work, especially when you're in business because you care about people and you see it more of a mission and a purpose and the thing that you were born to do. And when you feel like that and you experience a problem with a person that you're trying to help, it, feel, it can feel so personal. And I know that you're like that. Hey, Shares, and that's why you're here. So you're probably going to take it really personal too. And I get it. I totally get it. So here's some of the challenging situations that I've experienced with clients that I'm going to share with you now. And then I'm going to share with you things to do so that when these things happen, you're prepared. And although it might hurt, you have processes in place to deal with it easier. If you get to a point where you don't care, then I think that you've stopped caring in general. And that's not a good place to be. These things should feel hurtful. They should test you and challenge you. Because if we don't care, like really truly don't give a shit what people say or think about us, 
I don't know if that's a good place to be because I think you've probably lost some of your compassion and care for your work. So I'm not saying don't care. I'm also not saying don't learn from situations because there are two types of challenging situations when it comes to clients. One is when we fuck up and we get things wrong. Not because we mean to, but we just, we might get things wrong. Feedback might be needed for us to grow. We might be able to do something better and someone sharing that with us highlights it and helps us to evolve. That's different. And that's to be expected when you're just starting out. We, from day one, in the Wealth Accelerator Mentorship, have asked people to provide us with feedback on a regular basis. And we provide them with the information to do that because we want to know how we can be better. And some of our greatest changes to the mentorship program have come from that feedback. But sometimes people don't want to, don't want to work towards a resolution with you. Sometimes people are just being unreasonable for other reasons and it's not valuable feedback. And that's something different in itself. So some of the things I've experienced and how to deal with them. Number one, people not paying their bill. Look, we all know, don't we, that this is gonna happen. I suppose when you go into business, you'd be a bit naive, wouldn't you, if you thought that everybody was gonna pay and everyone was gonna pay on time. Because when it comes to money, people have stuff, don't they? Scarcity. You've heard me talk about my money stuff. Hey Emma, good evening. And how I was broke and that I've had money and lost it again and not been very smart. And you know, you're dealing with people and you're dealing with all of that stuff too. They might not make the smartest decisions with their money. Even if you're a business coach like I am and you help people make more money, it doesn't necessarily mean the money they make they want to give to you to pay their bill. You know, some people don't share the same values as you when it comes to paying their bill. And I'll be honest, when I experienced this for the first time, or the first couple of times that I experienced this, it felt really icky because money does, doesn't it? And you're asking for something that, okay, you're owed. It was agreed that they pay it to you, but it's still not very nice to have to ask for it. I didn't like that at all. I hated that. I just expected people to pay because I, I've always paid and I'm not trying to say, look how great I am. I get that people have their reasons, but for me, if I've made a commitment to pay for something, like I would die of embarrassment if I didn't pay what was owed. So I, I just, just, I just thought that I assumed everyone would be the same, but I didn't quite know how to get around it when people weren't like that. The reality is some people don't see it like that. Some people are quite comfortable with not paying bills. And that's become a way of life for them and that's an area of growth for them. Some people genuinely have extenu extenuated, let's say exceptional instead, exceptional <laughs> circumstances that come up that means they're going through a tough time. You've got to know when you want to make allowances for people, but also when someone's taking the piss. And how you deal with both of those people are very different. We've always been really reasonable and made allowances and tried to help people. And I will always do that. I will always continue to do that if someone's being reasonable with us and looking for a resolution. You know, there's two types of emails you might get in this situation, three types. One, oh my God, I'm really sorry. Is there any chance we can have another week? Or da 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 da. Or this has happened, or this happened, unexpected bill, or da da da. I'm really sorry. Be really grateful if. That's one type of email. We can work with that because it's reasonable and it's asking and it's grateful. And then there's a second time. Sorry, I can't pay you. This, this and this has come up. I'll let you know when I've got the money. Not okay. Not okay to break an agreement and have that sort of attitude around it. And the third type is just nothing at all. Block you. <laughs> Look, these things happen, especially when we're dealing with money. And I'm going to go into the solutions in a minute of how, how, how we cope with this, how we deal with this. Don't take it personal when people say things that might be hurtful to get out of paying you. I took this really personal the first time it, it happened to me. I think I was just gobsmacked by it, to be honest. And I don't know why I was gobsmacked by it, because... I used to be a manager in a really large corporation in retail. 
back when I hated my life. <laughs> Um, but I dealt with the general public a lot for that, that big corporation on a large scale. Millions of people were customers each week. And I saw what some people would do, what lengths some people would go to for money, whether it be refunds they weren't owed or... Like, I can remember someone bringing clothes back once and saying, um, oh, I, I lost the tag, but it hasn't been worn but it's just not the right size. And on the back, it had got an iron mark in it. <laughs> she clearly ironed it and like burnt it, but wanted a refund. I saw a woman push her little girl on some liquid that was spilled to get compensation. The liquid she poured on the floor, we were able to check all the cameras. She was trying to get payout for compensation. It backfired, a little girl fell and hit her head really hard on like a metal post in this particular store that I was um, working in to get some compensation. I don't think, I like to think most people have good intentions, but people can do some really bad shit when it comes to, if they feel like their back's against the wall or they'd just rather spend it on something else. You know, it might be Christmas and the child needs a new bike and they've agreed to pay you something, but they'd rather buy the bike instead and they maybe haven't managed their money or, there can be many reasons. If someone is saying to you, I appreciate we have an agreement, I appreciate you've given me a service and I've not paid for it and I really want to put that right but I need a little bit of extra time. I would say make allowances for that. Be really clear what those allowances are, what the new parameters that you are that are going to agree. If someone, like I've experienced, who's been like, love it, love it, love it, love it, 10 out of 10, oh my God, thank you so much, making a shit ton of money, more than they've ever made, and then decides I don't want to pay, and probably doesn't deal with it in the best way and when we say no that's not okay well it was shit anyway didn't like it blah, 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 blah. sort of it can feel like what are you joking what do you mean this is about money this is clearly about money don't try and make it about something else but people can get personal when it comes to money i'm not saying any of this to scare you most people are a dream to work with especially if you've got the selection process and the qualification process for who you want to take as a client right most people are really good. But of course you're gonna get challenging people in situations. If you sell courses, there will be the people that wanna rip through your course as fast as possible, download all the material and then claim a refund or just stop paying for it on a payment plan. It happens. Most people are good, but it happens. We'll talk about the solutions in a minute. All of these things have happened to me. And because we built so fast, they all happened in a really condensed period of time. The second thing that can happen, clients making unreasonable demands. I had <laughs> numerous times this has happened to me. Um, not so much anymore, and I'll tell you why in a minute. But when we first started out, I want, and there's a few examples of this, but one in particular stands out of a lady that had had the one-to-one -one time that we'd agreed with me wrapped around that one to one was one to one time is group time and like um, a course environment area where they can learn access to all of my intellectual property and we had the one to one time and it was very valuable the things that were covered in that and she went away with some really clear next steps but she came and said i don't feel like i was as prepared as i could have been didn't do all the work that you asked me to do before those one to ones. So can we do it? Can we do them again? Like all of them? No, please. No, do I need to pay extra? Not that I would have necessarily charged her, but I think expecting more than what's agreed is always a bit of a red flag for me now. And we did. Me, Mrs. hadn't got my boundaries in check, which I talked to you about last week. I was like, okay, yeah, no problem. Because I just wanted people to be happy. That's all I wanted when I first started out. I still want that. But sometimes we've got to recognise that keeping our boundaries intact is important. And some people won't be happy no matter what you do. And we did again. And then she kept asking for more, more, more. But I'd done that. I'd set that standard. I'd said yes to an unreasonable demand and therefore couldn't be shocked when they kept coming because you have to teach, teach people how to treat you. Like another lady, she said to me once, um, 
And I've written about this in my journal because you can tell the way I've written it. I'm just like, can you believe? When it came to her final payment on a payment plan, she said, um, can you just let me off with this one because I've paid all the others? <laughs> like that was a reason to not pay because I've paid everything else. I've paid my other months. Why do you just let me off with this one? And was like shitty because we didn't. <laughs> shitty because we were like, no, because that would mean you hadn't paid what you were. Like, what? <laughs> but you know, the thing is, what is one person's perfectly acceptable is totally unacceptable for someone else. What is one person's reasonable request is unreasonable to someone else. And this is why when I talk about the solutions, you'll, you'll hear me talk about the fact that agreements are really important, that it's black and white. This is what you get, this is what you don't get. Number three, I've had people give their friends free access to my courses <laughs> without paying for it. Um, again, I suppose naive to think this stuff doesn't happen, but when it happens and you hear about it, you're like, what? A girl messaged me on Facebook and said, um, just want to tell you how grateful I am. Your Wealth Accelerator course is amazing. Bear in mind, my Wealth Accelerator program isn't a course. There's material to assist your learning in a mentorship environment where you have access to me and the team to guide you through the things you need to learn to build a business, not just a course where you go through from start to finish. And I would never make it that because the vast majority of people just wouldn't achieve just learning in that way. You need to be able to extract wisdom and ask questions and it's all part of the process. So when I didn't recognize her name, and yes, we've worked with a lot of people, but I know their name, I know my clients. I didn't know her. So how the hell had she been through my program? And when I asked the question, she was like, oh, my friend gave me access, she bought it and just shared the password with me. You know what's really funny about that? It's not so funny, it's like sick funny. Is that that same girl rinsed through all the material and then tried to not pay what she owed. Another red flag. And you'll see a pattern here. If red flags appear, we've got to monitor them because actually we can create more of a challenging situation than, than it needs to be by not spotting a red flag and putting a really a really firm boundary in very quickly because actually when this girl said to me that that had happened and that somebody had given her access because i didn't want the confrontation i didn't call it out because i just thought it's happened now i've got to continue mentoring this girl i don't want to make it icky i'm just going to continue that relationship with her knowing what i know but it's not going to affect the way I treat her and I don't want there to be an atmosphere. So if I call it out and she says, yeah, I did it or I'm just going to leave it, which wasn't the right way. And normally I'm a really clear communicator, but for a while when I first started out, especially running groups, I was so eager to please that sometimes it bit me in the backside and it had the adverse effect because it stopped me from being such a clear communicator and saying, let's talk about this because I feel a bit shit about this. Like what happened? which would have been much better because it probably would have shown me more about her character that would have highlighted problems I was going to have in the future with her and potentially save me and her the aggro there and then. The fourth thing that I've experienced that you may experience too, now this is more dependent on your industry. Competing with you instead of learning from you. People that come to you saying they have the intention of learning from you but really, they see you as competition and want to extract as much as they can and use the environment that you provide them with to pitch their services. Being someone that offers group mentorship means that, and this has not happened often at all, I can think of twice in my entire time of running group mentorship programs and hundreds of women that have gone through them too, that have quite obviously been there to position themselves as an expert and to pitch rather than to learn. Which really affects the dynamic of a group. Because dynamics are everything in a group environment. And we pride ourselves on, on being very careful with the dynamic of groups, which is why this is an absolute no-no. 
because it brings a very different energy if someone's there as a sees you as a competitor. Because what I noticed was that these people were, to me, one on one, going, "Oh my God, thank you so much! Like I've gone from earning five hundred quid to just having a thirty grand month. I'm so over the moon. Thank you so much." But publicly saying things like, "Oh yeah, I was already doing all of that." before and I show people I show my clients how to do this stuff so if you need anything guys I'm here and you're like what <laughs> and and seeing that and then seeing people go oh can I can you help me with this because you're obviously killing it then and then being pitched when they think they're having a conversation with one of their peers that can be trusted and actually that person is sensing vulnerability in someone that may be not as far ahead as them and using that as an opportunity to pitch, it really messes with the dynamic of an environment of people that are meant to be there to learn. And it's something you absolutely have to watch and stamp out if you run a business where this might be relevant. And I'll talk to you about solutions now. So here's what I've learned from dealing with some of this stuff. Have your legals in place and record everything because that's your due diligence. Due diligence. I had a little group, a small group of girls that I still to this day, still to this day, hand on my heart, have no idea what caused it, what set them off. But they hounded me and made it their business. And some of them weren't clients, but made it their business to try to ruin my reputation and I, I still to this day don't know why or what caused because none of them would some of them are anonymous just talking shit about me online but some of them I did know and they never had a conversation with me so I still don't know to this day what happened but you, you kind of get to piece a bit of a bit of it together and it from what I can gather and it, it's still only from what I can gather and this, this went on for two years, guys. Like, I'm being honest with you about this because it was a big part of my journey and I said I would be. And there's so, so many lessons in it. It started with someone sending me an email saying, and, and there were some other things around this time, but that they didn't want to pay what they owed me because they had heard that I faked testimonials. So that I made up some of my testimonials that are featured as case studies of clients that I've worked with. Therefore, I'm not paying. And obviously our response was, there is absolutely no truth in that. And it sounded, I'll be honest, it sounded like a little bit of an attempt to just cause a problem so you don't have to pay what you owe. We didn't take it too seriously. But then this rumor started to spread. And it became really toxic. Now, this is why I said have every, all your records and all your legals in place. Because before I knew it, this one email had turned into a full-on rumour that people were starting to buy into. That I was just making stuff up. Now, luckily, every time someone gives us a testimonial, they write it in their words and we literally just copy and paste it verbatim onto the website or onto social media, wherever we're sharing it unless we ask them if we can slice it down a little bit because it might be too big or and if we do we always share with them how we've sliced it down for them to approve so it's still an exact true reflection of what they've said and we would never alter anything like that so there's a paper trail of these conversations there's a paper trail of what the clients have written what we've posted really obvious that that's not what's happened and we would never do that we don't need to do that we have plenty of client success stories you don't need to make them up but this rumor started and for whatever reason, people started to, I don't know, this thing isn't there about groups, especially groups of girls, like this like pack mentality that can set off where one person says something and they kind of wind each other up. And then the other one was that then <laughs> was I'd been done for fraud. And this was like, well, it's news to me. I think I'd know about it. But what had happened is somebody had found an article of a woman called Michelle Stonehill. So she's got an E where I'm Stonehill and people people confuse it all the time. I can't tell you the amount of people that put an E in my name and assume it's Stonehill, but it's not. <laughs> my name's Stonehill. But this woman, years ago, I think before I was even in business, 
had defrauded people out of money, something to do with like holiday homes, like campsites. And someone had just found this article and gone, oh, Michelle Stanley, fraud. Oh my God. And she's been faking testimonials. And they just like wound each other up. And some of this got into the heads of some of the clients that I was working with. And suddenly there was a lack of trust. And I can tell you now with the hand on my heart that out of that group that just was hell bent on defaming my name and there was not an ounce of truth in any of it, not even one ounce. And I think that's what hurt the most was because I think if you know how you could have prevented something, then you kind of, you can move forward from it because you're like, right, okay, I can see how that happened, okay. But like, I couldn't even see what I could have done differently. And it really, it hurt, it really hurt, deeply hurt. And I'm not gonna lie to you, there was points where I was like, I don't wanna do this. I don't wanna do this anymore because if someone can just make something up about me, and just write it all over the internet, because that's what they did. I felt really vulnerable. I felt like there was no protection from that. And the reality is there is no protection from that. We live in a world where people can just write shit about you on the internet. And at the time when you go through it, honestly, it felt like I'd been publicly humiliated. That's how it felt. And some of the people that are done that and played part of that with people that I'd just done nothing but try to help and up until that point I had been so full of gratitude for everything I had done but just turned like that I mean one of them I can remember emailing me holding me at ransom and saying I tell you what we won't write anything else on the internet about you we won't we'll take it all down if you just give me a full refund and I'm like but hold on a minute you loved the service I provided you told me in your feedback every every week that we asked for it, that you loved it. I have evidence of that. You've been writing all of your achievements and all the money you've earned. And you know, these, these weren't just people that were struggling. So I couldn't say how I could have done something different or, or could have prevented it. So at the time it was really difficult to deal with, but here's the thing. Yes, people can go and talk shit about you on the internet. They can. It's only a small percentage of people and it doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter, not really in the grand scale of things. What matters is that there's a consequence to that if it affects your business and that consequence may be legal action and that you can put your head on the pillar at night and know that you did the right thing. Now, here's my mistake and I, I said I'd be transparent so I'm being transparent. My mistake was I let it go. I let it go because it hurt me so deeply and I didn't want to spend any energy on it and I thought that was the right thing to do. So I didn't respond, I didn't give it energy. Any money that was owed to me, I was just like, do you know what, keep it. You need it more than I do because if this is the way you treat people and the way you conduct yourself, like success is always going to elude you, keep it. I'm not bothered about the loss to the business, the loss to my income, I don't care. I just don't want to have to deal with that toxic, horrible energy anymore. Goodbye. Thinking that that would be the end of it. But here's the thing. That doesn't help because what it almost tells people is that that was okay, that it was okay to treat you like that. And that it got them somewhere doing it too. It kind of fuels it. And I was just sat there one day and I just posted something on, online. Um, it was on my business page. I was so happy for a client. She just had a biggest month ever and we'd just been chatting about it. It was just an awesome day and I posted it on my business page. And one of these girls commented underneath with something really vicious and nasty. And I had done so much for this girl, like unbelievable. And, and bear in mind, none of them have ever, ever had a conversation with me. None of them, have, and I'm all for communication. The first thing I'll do if I know somebody that, I mean, just your anonymous trolls, there's nothing you can do. And I've had my fair share of that. But if I know that someone's unhappy and I can tell and there's a, I'll just say like, let's chat. It's like, come on, let's talk this out. No matter what it is, we can get through it if we communicate. But they don't want to talk and the reason people like that don't want to talk is because they don't want to reach a resolution with you they don't want to resolve it they just want what they want and that might be to ruin your reputation if they see you as competition it might be to get out of paying you something their agenda can be all sorts of things so there's no point in trying to reason with someone that wants to be unreasonable 
And that blindsided me because I was like, well, if these people won't talk to me, but they just want to, like, what, what do I even do? And I was sat there. This, this person popped up with this vicious comment and I was just like, enough, enough. Now, bearing in mind my legal team had been telling me, you need to do something about this. It's not okay. And you need to draw a line in the sand and you need to take action because if you don't, it's giving people the green light to treat you like this and people talk. So on that day, I was like, enough. I've tried being nice, I've tried ignoring, I've tried just taking the loss and, and cutting out the energy, but it's making it worse. Therefore, we need to do something about this. And I decided that day to take legal action. In fact, we had the first case two weeks ago and I was awarded 13 and a half thousand pound in that court case. And I'm not telling you anything that I'm not allowed to say. I'm not mentioning names or anything like that. Because of the money owed and the time spent and the loss to our business that this nonsense created. And that's just the first one of that, that group of girls. And then I cried my eyes out after that court case because I had to do that. I had to, I didn't fucking get into business for that shit. That's the last thing I want. It wasn't a celebration. You'd think, wouldn't you, you'd come, it's an online court case because of COVID. You'd think you'd come off, wouldn't you? be like, yay, not at all. That's nothing to celebrate. I don't want to have to dish out that consequence to people. I just want people to do the right thing and be reasonable. And what I realised is sometimes you have to be the person that helps them feel that consequence. Because someone said to me, they were like, they will do that to other people. If, you, if, if everyone lets them get away with it, they just keep acting that way. They sometimes have to feel a bit of pain over it. And they were right. Because only now has it stopped, really. Because they're starting to go, shit, we're not getting away with that anymore. Be consistent, people talk. If you can't do one thing for everybody you work with, then don't do it for one person. I've learned that as well. Me thinking that I was going above and beyond for some people. Yes, Hayley, standing up to a bully thing, that's exactly what it is. And that's how I had to come to see it, was that if you don't stand up to them, they continue to do it. And that's how I had to, I had to get to that place in my mind. And it took me a while. Um, yeah, you have to be consistent and know that people talk. And that was my mistake with that group because I went, fine, just, just go, God, don't pay me. I'll pay you to just leave me alone. Like what? That's how it got. I created a problem there because then what happened was they said to other people, do you know what? If you fancy getting away with not paying, you can just like literally just threaten her with this, this, this and this. And she just backs down. And I, 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 it still shocks me to this day that people like that, for whatever reason, can just get a bed at night and be all right with their actions. Like it really, really shocks me. But at the end of the day, I also know that people do things. Good people do shitty things. Good people make bad choices. Like I know that too. And I'm not in a place where I'm... Um, angry or upset or any of those things with those people with anybody because I get it like I, I just I can't say I've done it but I get that if we're in shitty positions or we feel a certain way or you don't know what might be going on for people I know that like one lady for example like her husband was really quite challenging and she hadn't told him she was investing in herself and there was all shit there with her marriage and like I get it I get that people do shit things like I understand and there's no animosity and I would say that you have to get yourself to a place where you don't harbour that any either because it's toxic for you and if anything happens that you do take personal just just release it as quickly as you can as hard as that is do the work to release it because it takes you out of the game for the people that because we're talking a really tiny percentage of people here and there's all these people that are amazing and a joy and just winning and fair and reasonable and just a pleasure. And you almost think, God, you could be my mates as well as my clients. Like, I want to see you in person one day and all of that. They're the majority. But what do we do when we're faced with negativity? We can really focus in on the minority. And honestly, there were points where I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. 
I don't want to do this anymore if that's how it, how people are going to be or because I couldn't see how I could have done anything different and I think that's where it really gets you but you've got to accept the fact that there are some people that you could have done more for and you can learn from that there are some people that it wouldn't have mattered how much you do for them it would never have been enough and you have to be wise enough to know the difference don't coach friends I think I might be running over tonight because I've got a lot to say on this on this topic don't coach friends because it never ends well. And I know that you might have people in your life that are friends that you could really help with your product or service that you wanna help and therefore you think it won't hurt. We're really good friends. Honestly, don't coach friends. Um, I learned this the hard way. I had a friend that said to me, can I do your program? She was just starting out. She was at her back was against the wall a little bit financially. She needed some help to get her business off the ground quickly. She trusted me, she approached me, and I was like, no, it's not a good idea. I've got major reservations about this. And we talked and talked and talked about it. She kept bringing it up over and over again, even though I was trying to politely say no. And then we got to a point where I was like, okay, let's do it. I gave her mate's rates. I shouldn't have done that. I should never have done that because I set this standard straight away. I thought I was doing the right, right thing. The thing is you kind of set a standard straight, straight away that you're going to be treated differently to everybody else. And that's not a good dynamic to have between coach and coachee anyway. Especially not if somebody is not going to respect your boundaries, which is what ended up happening, where although I'd give a mate's rate, I'd give her an exceptional plan to pay it back in a way that was affordable for anybody, literally anybody. She was telling me about um, weekends that she'd booked away to go to retreats and then getting to the end of the month and saying to me, sorry, hon, I can't afford to pay you. But she'd be on the phone on a weekend saying she wanted to catch up as a friend and then expecting a one-hour coaching call on a one-to-one -one basis, but but still not pay me. Like, it caused friction. To the point where I couldn't unsee that character and I just didn't want to be a friend anymore. So some might say, well, it was a blessing then. It's a good job we did coach her because you saw sides of her that probably you needed to see, and that might be true, but I'd rather have not found out like that. I just think that mixing that relationship is a really bad idea and, and some of your friends can become some of your most challenging clients and actually your friends won't show up in the way that they might need to for you if you're a coach or a mentor or something similar they might need a stranger it's just a better dynamic for them never allow someone to hold you at ransom be strong and stand up to bullies you know when i had someone email me say like do this do that i asked them to talk shit about you on the internet i'm going to do this i'm going to do that we didn't succumb to that and we said, no, that's not okay. Because if you do that, then we both know that there's no truth in what you're putting out there, but you're not going to hold me at ransom for money. And then it turned into, oh, all the money you've got, you're not going to miss it. This isn't about money, who's got the most of it. It's about what's right and what's been agreed and that that's not okay. And you should know that too, that the more money you earn, the more people will feel entitled to your money. Like, well, now you've got a lot of it. Like, you're not going to miss it. So <laughs> there's an element of that as well. And that gobsmacked me when it first came up but new level new devil something to be celebrated people who are the most difficult to please normally are the ones that it's not worth trying to please because they're never happy anyway i've realized you've got two types of people more people and grateful people more people will always want more doesn't matter how much you go above and beyond they are more people they're always asking, what else can I have? What else can I have? They're probably the same people that are eating their breakfast and thinking about what they're having for lunch, buying a pair of shoes and thinking about when they can buy a new coat next week. Because it's there's a lack of gratitude for what's in front of them. Um, and they're always thinking about what they can take next. They're normally the people that are the most demanding and the most oblivious at how much you're going above and beyond for them. And in my experience, it's not worth going above and beyond to a degree that affects your boundaries for people like that because you won't be thought any better off for it anyway. But there are people that are really, really grateful, most people, in fact, that are really grateful, that will appreciate it when you do go above and beyond and see that. Um, and that's where the focus and attention really needs to be. Remember, the majority of people are good. I know that tonight we've talked about challenges, and but remember, the majority of people aren't going to be challenging. The majority of people are going to be a joy to work with. But if we're not prepared for this stuff, if our processes aren't in place, if our legals aren't in place, if we should be writing the process when we're not emotional. Now, if, you, if your business isn't big enough or served enough people yet to deal with any people problems, deal with the processes now so that when they do come up, 
and you're not and you're emotional because you will be because it's personal because of course it's personal it's your baby you care if you don't care you might be in the wrong business so when the challenges come up you will be emotional you'll feel emotional and you won't be best equipped to ride the process there and then because it will be an emotional not strategic process whereas if you write it now and you know this is what i'm going to do this is going to be the process for if someone doesn't pay they'll get a reminder and then if they still don't pay they'll get this and then what will happen and then what will happen and da, 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 da. know what your boundaries are and know them now because when it comes up and you're in that situation you'll be tempted to bend those boundaries and do some of the things that i did and mess up and not be consistent and allow people to take the piss and and think that it's better to ignore rather than stand up to somebody that's that's blatantly a bully those things will come up for you too unless you set the boundaries now i really wish somebody had had this conversation with me beforehand because it wasn't until i was going through it and then i was in masterminds with high level coaches going god guys this is happening and they're like yeah yeah that happens and i'm like it does <laughs> it's not just me and they're like no 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 of course and i just think you know a little bit of warning would have been nice from somewhere i don't know who i'm blaming for that <laughs> there's no one to blame for that of course but I just think sometimes that knowledge just sets you up to feel better when you're going through something. Remember the industry standard is, you know, customer satisfaction, good customer satisfaction, 80%, 90%. If you're achieving 80, 90% of people that say, love it, brilliant, and there was not a problem with them at all, and you experience no challenges, then you're doing really well. But if you're expecting 100% problem free when you're dealing with the general public, then your expectations need altering and the processes need writing so that you get through challenges so much easier. And for the most part, I promise you, it will be an absolute joy to work with your dream clients and making a difference with your work. Most people will be good, most people will be grateful, but I just want you to be prepared, prepared for the people that won't and learn from my experiences. Next week, we're going to be moving into a different part of the story that's not so much about challenges. It's about the process of manifesting our dream home, paid for in cash. And how that happened and how quickly that happened and why it happened that quickly. So next week's more woo-woo. Um, it's not so much strategy and what to do when. It's more manifestation and the laws of the universe and intuition and knowing how to set strong intentions and act when you get a sign. It's more about that stuff and achieve goals that feel impossible to achieve in a really short space of time by using some of that magic. So I'll see you next week. Speak soon.